Hi, I'm Hinton Harrison from Bluebird, and behind me is our all-electric conventional electric bus. Today we're going to go through how to start an electric bus and go through some of the interior features of that bus. One key point of an electric bus is how quiet it is, to the point where it's almost too quiet. But one of the features that I wanted to point out to you before we do that start is in our front grill, we have what's called a noise generator. And this noise generator turns itself on and off depending on what the bus is doing. So for example, when the bus is sitting still and, or it's doing less than 18 miles an hour, the noise generator emits a sound that's loud enough for the people at the bus stops or on sidewalks to hear the bus coming. Once the bus reaches a speed over 18 miles an hour, it slowly turns itself off to where you're not hearing that noise going any faster than that. So now let's go inside and start the bus. Now to start an electric bus, it's a little bit different than if you have a diesel or a propane engine. So that's what we're going to go over right now. So the first thing you want to do is get your seat adjusted, get your steering wheel adjusted, and you also have to put on your seat belt. That's one of the two interlocks that must be met in order for the, the bus in order to move down the road. In order to get it started, First, turn the key to the on position. And what that will do is that starts to energize and start the systems uh, activating. And what you want to look for is where it says in your display, initialization complete. Once you see that, go back to the key and give it about a one to two second turn and release it. You'll now see where it says vehicle enabled and now the bus is ready to go, but almost. The second interlock we have to uh, satisfy is we have to close the entrance door. If the entrance door is not closed and your seat belt is not on, we will not be able to put the gear selector in either drive or reverse. So to prepare to move down the road, you wanna put your foot on the brake, release the parking brake, and either push D for drive or R for reverse. Now, if we did not have our seat belt on or the entrance door was closed, and I'll demonstrate that here, we get a warning signal on our cluster that tells us to set the parking brake because we do not have our seat belt on. If I set the parking brake, that signal goes away but I still cannot go back and try to move the bus, nor will it go into any gear. If I put my seat belt back on, release my parking brake, I can go to drive, or I can go to reverse, or back to neutral. So one of the first things you'll notice when you're driving an electric bus is just how quiet it is. You hear a little bit of road noise from the tires. You hear a little bit of a rattle and hitting a few of the bumps. But that's one of the nice things about this is now you can concentrate on the road and also the passengers. The other thing we need to point out is we have replaced the tachometer on the electric bus with an efficiency meter. So we wanna to try to keep that meter as close to the green and the amber as possible. When we get a little heavy footed with the accelerator, notice the we get into a very inefficient range. We want to stay in this range as much as possible. And also, as we're speeding up, we want to coast into our stops as much as possible, which allows the motor to turn into a generator that puts electricity back into the batteries that extends our range. We're going to make a turn up here in about a quarter of a mile, and I'll show you what I mean about how the motor will turn into a generator, because right now we're burning about an average amount of electricity, and then we want to coast as much as possible, and we'll watch that meter 
come into the green. So right now I'm coasting. The meter has come over into the green and our regeneration is also acting like a secondary break. Uh, sort of like a retorter or a, a, a VGT on a diesel bus. And again, I'm going to make a demonstration on how not to drive it. Uh, it makes it very inefficient and it also reduces your miles. Notice my gauge is very much into the amber range. It's fun to drive, but it's inefficient. This is where we like to have the meter be when we're driving down the road. So if we're in the back roads or you're in a, a hilly area, you're not going to want to drive this bus too much different than what you drive your other diesel or propane buses. Uh, this bus, if you once you drive it the first time, you'll notice it has a lot of power. So you getting up the hills are going to be a lot easier with this bus. Uh, you're going to move pretty well. Uh, it's going to be able to pull out in traffic uh, really well, especially if you have to pull up hill. Uh, it's a little difficult to show uh, here just talking about it. It's definitely something that, that you must experience in order to get the full effect out of it. And what I'm going to show here that I'm approaching this intersection, you notice I'm coasting as much as possible, uh, very light on the brakes. And when we're going to go around this turn, what we're going to do is we're going to show that we want to accelerate very slowly. We want to keep our gauge pointed up just about as much as possible. So yes, it is a little bit slow, but we're trying to save the batteries and, and extend the range uh, as much as we possibly can. A lot of people ask, well, why should I pick uh, I know, a Bluebird uh, electric bus? And there are a couple reasons for that. One, it's the Bluebird name. Uh, we, we've been around for years. Uh, we were the first with electric buses back in 1994. Uh, and when we built uh, this bus and we put an electric uh, motor in it, we did not sacrifice any of the safety features that all of the Bluebirds have. So the body that this bus has is the exact same body that all of our Bluebirds have. It meets the Kentucky Pole test. It meets the Colorado Racking test. So we wanted to make sure that everybody understood that even though it doesn't have an engine in it, it's still the exact same body, the exact same seats, with the exact same safety features as all of our other Bluebird buses. So a lot of people, when they first drive this bus, they're, they're a little hesitant uh, to pull out into heavy traffic or are they afraid that the bus is not going to move very well. But when they get in it and they actually get behind the wheel and they drive with it, then they understand that this bus actually has more acceleration and more power uh, to start with than what the diesels and the propanes do. So sitting here checking the mileage and looking at the bus and how we did with it today, we took a note of that we drove 16 road miles today, but our batteries saw that we only used 11 miles worth of electricity out of them. And all that is because of our regeneration process on this bus. So while the bus is coasting and you don't have your foot on the accelerator, the motor that pushes the bus down the road turns into a generator. And that generator makes electricity and puts it back into the batteries to be consumed a little bit later. So all that electricity that we can make with the motor while on route, that if we drive uh, really slow, we don't uh, take off too quickly, and we keep our top speeds down, we can put quite a bit of electricity back into our batteries uh, for a very efficient style electric bus. Thank you for joining us today on our Bluebird all electric ride and drive. If you'd like more information, please go to our website at www.blue-bird.com.